Oh, hi, this is me. I'm tired of these Mac of feet. Oh, shoot. My, these Mac of feet. Excuse me. Car cartoon. Advertisement. So, here's the dilemma that I'm in. This is Election Day 2020, so that's just a headline. Here's the dilemma I'm in. I'm renting um, office space, and I'm renting two office spaces, actually, and one is aggravating with the other person in the um, place and they complained because they heard my patients walk in and come in and I shut the door and had a um, noisemaker on. They had a noisemaker too or a, a white noisemaker. Um, white, white noise. Yeah, that's right. And this other place, it's not what I want um, inside, but I realize, so I, I don't want to talk crap about other people, even though I do, so I can make a private video or something, and you guys could get a link, I'll give you a link, let me know in the comments, um, like, subscribe, please, I've been on YouTube for many years, and I'm not a person who can do advertising, because I don't have enough views, enough hours, or enough um, subscribers, please help me out, so, um, I am... <clears throat> getting wishy-washy. So this is this is what I'm going to tell you from two months ago, or, month in, or two months ago. I had a place I wanted Thursday, Friday. Part of it's because of the, some of the insurance stuff that I'm doing and some of the requirements. It's giving me the time that I need um, to do those requirements um, by working that. Someone else said they were going to use the room that I couldn't have Thursday, that I needed Wednesday and Friday. And then that person bailed. It's, and they already had a room across the hall. So they were trying to change my schedule to fit their schedule. And so I've been advertising to my customers and um, making my schedule around that and getting in the habit of going to the office. Um, so now I have a conflict with a lot of different things and the conflict is getting worse and I'm hoping to God that I can I'm realizing so I I said that um, I get mad at people uh, maybe I didn't say it I thought I said this in a video that I wanted to like if I got if my boyfriend and I didn't agree on something that I I just want to get angry and um, she thinks that I'm playing a victim. But I need to look at myself. So if I if I take a look at say like twelve step or Al Anon, what do I need to do? And it, this and like my my recovery, I I like the more um, the Buddhist recovery meetings actually better. Um, some of them, depending on which ones you go to, have a high twelve step backing, which is weird. Um, in my opinion, I feel like it should we should leave that at the door. That's my personal opinion. I feel like we should, as individuals, do what program works for us. And if you meet up with people that you see at this meeting and you see at this meeting, but I think that when you go into those meetings, you should base it on that. And if you're talking about your personal recovery, when you go around the room as an individual, I feel like then that you can say, oh, I like me, oh, I went to NA from 2004 till Till now, I guess, <laughs> like for 16 years. Um, I don't know if I went into, I was trying to think if I went in 2003. Anyways, I do have an Al Anon anniversary of 11 19 last year. My boyfriend took me to Al Anon. I've been to Al Anon um, in Portland starting in 2004 when I got sick. I believe it was 2004. It could have been 2005. Um, so I'm trying to think back to when I had walking pneumonia. I should call that clinic and ask for the record. It's been more than 10 years. So I'm trying to think about the weather. Was it before or after Christmas? Because if it was after Christmas, it would have been 2005. Or a week after Christmas, I guess. Um, <clears throat> a week. Anyways, so that, so that my Alan on teaching is teaching me that... Um, And it's, well, my, my NA's teaching is teaching me to go to a meeting, seek a higher power, and um, 
keep my side of the street clean. And my AA, my early AA, I'm looking, I thought I just saw my AA book. I must have put it in the box. AA is telling me, or my AA book has a page that talks about um, clean house. Um, I told this guy that my house was cluttered, like my literal house was cluttered. And it, so clean house can mean that. I, I think when you actually clean your house, you're more um, stable mentally. Or like me, <laughs> it's the opposite sometimes. You clean your house and you have a panic attack because your house is too clean. The clean house also means to get stuff out and to clear stuff up. So say a lot of our stuff from my recovery is early recovery foundation. Um, so me as an individual, not as a group. I talk, so I'm going to say that it's my share time and not me chairing a meeting. I'm not chairing a meeting of, of I mean, I could chair a meeting of AA and talk about Buddhist principles, I guess, in my share, but you're supposed to read the literature from that organization approved by that organization at least. Um, I know people bring them Bible scriptures and stuff. But anyways, there are no rules, but there are rules. <laughs> like here's what's here's the big light bulb that's popping up in my mind. So I wanted to say that a lot of stuff I talk about was a foundation of my life in two thousand four. Um I can clean house the light bulb that came on when I said it, like the third time, was this isn't working for me. Dust. Take the broom and dust it out away. This isn't working for me. Take the broom and dust it away. This isn't working for me. Take the broom and dust it away. And so on and so on. Do you understand where I'm going with that? Um. So I got these people texting and from. 7 a.m. to 11, after 11 at night, on weekends, and I don't like to wake up. I literally get tachycardia from this place. <clears throat> um, I can feel my heart. You know, it's weird, I had tachycardia because of the same incident the other day. So, increased heart rate, it went to like 138. We went out for a walk, and it went down to like 78, which is really interesting. Um, it's low now. And then I, we were walking some more, I think, regularly, and it, I think it, it went up to 120. Um, so my resting heart rate, after seeing these much, thank God it's my oxygen as well. So it just jumped up to 111, and then my oxygen finally went up to 99, and it was at 98. So it's jumping around. I'm eating and not breathing and breathing and talking. I can feel anxiety in my heart. So I feel like I should get rid of this. Look. <laughs> I was like, like a boyfriend. I was like, wait, no. That's not me. My mind was like, like a boyfriend. Don't get rid of the When you haven't, you find anyone. I was like, wait, no, I didn't mean that. That's like a job. Like a house. Don't get rid of your house before you get a new one unless you plan on living in your car like literally like unless, unless you plan on full-time RVing or boondocking or VS camping or whatever which is very common for in the past it was like a luxury to do that people on the road have a fixed income I had their YouTube channel income to that etc etc and then people can buy up homes hotel room for the night without income that's why I asked for your help. As, um, I have this channel on my other channel. So, um, I was going to renege, which I hate. I don't even like that word because it has a part of the N word in it. I was going to renege because the terms and conditions have changed extensively from my lease. And there's no, I'm not a lawyer. I feel like I've taken law classes. I have the one degree that proper degree I don't have. I'm doing um signing agent stuff too, but um I have the law um different jurisdictions and different circumstances. 
the law needs to be specific. I, I've, I have lawyer, lawyers who I've hired, who I'm calling, they're giving me deadlines. Oh, you have to do this. Oh, I have this paperwork in by five today. Like, while I'm out, I have my keys right out the door. Really? Do I have to go print it, sign it, agree to it on a Friday at, afternoon at 4.45 and sign it, um, date it, and re scan it and email it to you by five? Like, that kind of bull. That screwed me over. Let me just tell you that. And they try to say, if you, you're not going to have any conversation if you don't do this right now. But I call this lawyer thing before or after that. He didn't tell me A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah, you're right. Huh? I've had lawyers say, no, you're wrong. Being married, Social Security benefits, sp spouse, ex-spouse, 10 years of marriage, you can... I've had lawyers and my mom's cousin tell me, you're wrong, you're wrong. So, look it up. The laws could change since then. You can look it up now, but back then, my rel one of my other relatives actually told me that. Is there sit on a computer and read directly from the Social Security web Administration website? My cousin, my mom's cousin, had been cohabitating with a man for many years and had just got married before he died and told me that's not true. I shouldn't get anything from this guy, or at least not in that way. And I, I said, this punk don't like me anyway, so I'm not going to talk to her. And then I said, oh, it dawned on me. You just got married less than 10 years ago. No, I forget, you know, when you're a domestic partner. And who knows what it is for states that recognize domestic domestic partnership and that, um, because then it's like, what what about the states that recognize the same um, sex marriage without a state having that? Like, there's things I've seen that protects same-sex couples that won't protect cohabitating um, male-female couples. And I find that interesting as well. And it's hard because that's, I feel like the marriage is a, it is a, like, I go to the courthouse, so it's like a government thing, and I don't even know what the person who performs ceremonies if you, I did everything in Reno, Nevada, so I did have to go to a, a government facility to get a marriage license, and then I had the reverend do the marriage, and it was a woman, and I don't know, I mean, literally, like, you can get in and out in 30 minutes, it, I mean, we probably could have, we went to the one place, she sent us across the street, and then we came back, so we probably could have, if we had known to go to place, the first place, we would have been there, 15 minute marriage. No classes, no HIV education, or fraternity classes and stuff that they were offering in Michigan, or requiring. Anyways, I'm not a lawyer. I read a lot of rules. You can read, like, say, tax information, blogs, H&R blog. They'll put stuff up. I use that as a, let's let's answer some more questions, such as seeing their response. I don't, as far as I can foresee me not being in too much of a hurry, I could see that being, um, <clears throat> I can see that being, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I can't even think of the word I'm looking for here. Oh, not as accurate. Like, people talk about dependence. Does this person live in your house? Does this person a blood relative? It's like, if no one has the girlfriend living in the house or the girlfriend's kid comes over because they're in a mental institution and you're, you're paying this four year old dreaming boy, driving him to school, buying him clothes, buying him food, paying electricity. Not 100%, but at least 50 or more percent to say they moved in before. What's the middle of the year? Say they lived there more than half the year. And you pay 100%. Maybe the child's mother paid 100% before that half of the year. So you have this. This is more than half a year. This is less than half a year. 
that's a qualifying um, person. Wait, does that have to be qualifying relative? Qualifying independent, qualifying. So now I have to look it up again. So the circumstance that I dealt with, which I didn't want this person doing, was qualified relative. It was not a dependent on, it wasn't like a college student under a certain age or a child under 17 or a grandchild or they even take um, husbands, or sorry, son in laws and ex son in laws. That's not a blood relatives. I'm trying to think. Qualifying dependent, qualifying child, qualifying relative. Anyways, look all this stuff up and it changes yearly too. <laughs> and you might find a contradiction in the IRS.gov. So that's where I go. IRS.gov. Look at their publications. Read through it if you have to print it so that you can highlight it and put flags on it, which I have little flags. So anyways, I'm getting some personal questions asked to me at 7 something this morning, 7.09 a.m. And that's none of this person's business. And here's what happened to my business. Um, I have a couple of things that got adjusted because of COVID-19. And I have some stuff I have to work out. Um, October, November, December are very important for my um, life because they're the months where it's getting darker. They're the months where the holidays are my birthday, you know, going through, through um, Halloween and Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, New Year's Eve. So you have that. Um, <clears throat> you have where I was a student for so long living off student loans where you have that last disbursement in September um, September, October, November, December, and then you would get money, what, the first week of January, my bank would not cash my check, so the first week, uh, or would not um, credit my account for several days, so the first or second week in January, that's still all of September, October, November, all of December, and then one, one fourth or half of January, so you had, say you had $2,000 of a refund you had to make it last paying your rent paying your bills somebody told me and my we had a study group to do the three months advance pay for your utilities and you just estimate and because i don't do that one where it stays even based on last year's average i do the one where it goes up and down up and down um, you had hot you had the air conditioner we have a portable air conditioner jumps your light bill jumps you had really cold moderately cold. Someone told me that when it's really cold, your heater's more efficient, but I don't know. When you have drafty windows, I think that makes a difference too. But um, anyways, there's a bunch of stuff. I told lawyer stuff, they told me I was wrong. I told relative stuff. Um, I was at an NA meeting, speaking of the, going back to the social security. I was at an NA meeting and I was talking to someone. I, it was just crowded, like pre-COVID. It was like, this was like over 10 years ago. Shoulder to shoulder at this t large table, or circle. I think, there, yeah, there was tables. And it was shoulder to shoulder. And I think there was an outer edge of people sitting in chairs, at least part of the room. Um, so we used to have business. I thought we had business meetings, or business meetings there on once a month. Anyways, um, I had been talking to the person next to me about, oh, I'm trying to do my divorce, oh, they gave me the runaround, oh, I couldn't afford it for the first couple of years, I had called my pastors from the courthouse, They're like, yeah, you, I was like, I don't know what to do, I'm waiting for him to clean up, it's like, you need to get divorced now, click, and, like, three years later, I was like, yeah, I'm still working with lawyers, I'm like, we thought you already got divorced, now, this is what I hate, and I think part of it is about, because I'm black, and I was married to a white man, or even now, being black and being with a, a, a white male, um, so, I end up having this lady at the meeting over here that I was talking to this person, to my friend or not, and someone else comes up to me and leans down and says, hey, I just had to interrupt your conversation. I know what you're talking about. I had um, dealt with that with my own ex-husband, and you're right, that 10-year thing, he's actually using my social security right now for disability or something like that. I don't think, at the time, for NA especially, there's a lot, there was, in my area, a lot of younger people with young kids, 
the end of you kind of get your life is like enough enough. People can drink for decades and just tear out their body slowly, like like the frog boiling slowly in the water. It's like in NA you get in some hot water and you have to jump out of that sucker, and that's it's not hard. I mean, alcohol, shoot, people have seizures getting up. I'm not. I I'm I've done both, but sometimes. I had to do the wean wean off program. I had to do the wean off by re required by my body or by choice. Both are not easy. Anyway, this lady leans down and said, I don't I don't mean to eavesdrop, but I heard your situation so I'm dealing with that now. You're right about that. Social security thing. So it's it's so I always felt like um I always felt like that I had <clears throat> I always felt like not always I don't like to use the word always. I felt like I had, um, here's my AA book. Um, I felt like I had, um, let's see if that word clean house is in here as well. So I'm going to look it up on my phone, see what page it's on. It's one good thing about the internet for people who don't like the internet. You can look up something from a book and find out exactly where it is. Touch that theory in a moment. I'm, I'm going to pray and meditate as well. Um, I'm going to pause the video and come back to you. I felt like, especially in 12-step meetings, that people would come into my life right at that moment. Strangers or people I hadn't seen in a long time. They'd come in right at that moment that I was struggling, couldn't make a decision, couldn't quiet my mind to pray and meditate, especially meditate. So I thought that was my prayer. I was like, oh shoot, I heard something. Not like, oh shoot, but I'm embarrassed to make videos in front of other people. And me and my kids. Because <laughs> they're like mini-me's and then they end up having a sign, quiet please, recording in session. I didn't see that sign once. I was knocking on the door. Oops. I didn't see that sign on the door. <laughs> recording in session. Um... I um I just I just thought I was calling this per person I don't know thinking that they had some similar beliefs as me and something told me that person remember in Portland when you had those liberals those Democrats those Black Lives Matter sticker those what is that one with the religious um that has like the the star and the cross and the, everything. Like, those who have those bumper stickers, I found to be the most racist, backstabbing, hated, closed-minded individuals I've ever seen. And they would say racist stuff. It'd be like, you think you're less of me, less, think of me as less than a person than I have a dog. No pets allowed in the store. <laughs> oh, like, leave Fido in the car. Oh, I'm, you know. You know. I'm trying to think of, so I don't have a dog right now. So. <laughs> And, wow, that was intense. It's from that food. I gotta stop. This is the fourth bag I've eaten in a week. <laughs> and I'd say there's restaurants, housing, job as a doctor like I am. And this person would see me as a dog. Wait. No pets allowed. No blacks allowed. And they also under the mindset that there, that you can't date outside of my race. I can't date outside of my race, but they can't. So they're gonna automatically say, oh, you should break up with this. You know? I have a friend that's gay, and I'll have a friend that's, um, a person of color, not black. Those are the only two people that support my, actually I have two, people of color that are not black and one gay those are those three people that are pretty much the only one that supports me in my partner's relationship and probably my um, sister-in-law who's uh, white um, and I don't even know if there's like a law if, if any of us are actually married or just have a um, relationship with our partner
I keep thinking biblically. Let's, let's change the subject. I keep thinking biblically that um, the people in the Bible had gotten married under God, and that have ceremonies and stuff too. Um, the Old Testament, the people are Jewish too. But what did someone try to say in the Torah or something that Jesus or not Jesus? Sorry. Adam and Eve. Eve wasn't his first wife. And I was like, what? Like, I had not heard that. There's like, there's, I had done this Lovecraft country. It's country, right? Because before I was calling it county. I had done this study group, and these, okay, it's all black women. The minds are so full of rich information. I'm not gonna like. If there's any blacks watching this video and if there's any whites but i've seen that i, I want to change the subject one more time but anyways under the not one more time one more time right now <laughs> i'm super like think of this think of this let me go back to this i worked in a daycare center and let me tell you something those black little babies were super smart super super smart i was really smart as a kid i memorized everything let me tell you something those kids, I had one-year-olds with full, I was, I was in, getting ready to go to medical school, and I was having, this little girl was having full conversation with me, and her, her friend, she was like, she was black and Asian, and she, her classmates were literally one, were they two, no, they weren't in that room, eight, my, eight weeks was in that room, you had, it was a wobble room. The wobbler room was not an infant and not a toddler yet. So it was like less than three. She could have been two. Let's just say that she could have been two. She could have been one something. She had to have been two, huh? Because I think over here was like three-year-olds. Because over here was like four-year-olds. And then the five-year-olds were with the big kids. Five to 13 or whatever. Five to 11, whatever the age limit was. Anyways, she was having full bone conversation. She was eating with the fork. We didn't have knives for babies. She was eating with the fork. She was having conversation. And this and blah, 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 blah. And she's sitting at the table. She was big. <laughs> she could drink a cup. And her, there's her, her classmates, the same age. Sitting in high chairs, smashing their peas. <laughs> like, drinking down her bottles and speaking. Is a spoon? We don't need that. Gonna bite my neighbor. Like, <laughs> and okay, I'm I'm not trying to be rude. People do peer reviewed studies. I read a peer reviewed study. I don't know if it's peer reviewed. Sorry, I read a study the other day out of Norway that men only wanted blonde women, or sorry, blue eyed women. I don't know if they put the word blonde in. Was it? This is out of Norway. There's a lot of people in Scandinavians over there that have blonde hair, blue eyes, that isolated on this like peninsula thing. And they have a common gene, so there's like an inbred gene that creates that, that genetic glitch that spread, and it's spread around the world, because you have blue-eyed Africans, uh, black-skinned, uh, or brown-skinned Africans, black hair. You have my son with light blue, or sorry, light brown eyes, and he had blonde hair, and now he has copper-colored hair. I have my daughter who's black, but looks, she looks like an Irish Native American with black hair that turns red when it's sun bleached. How did you get that? I met a Persian and dad was Persian, mom was American. Little girl that had hair like my daughter's ringlets, big ringlets. White skin, it's kind of an olive, orange olive skin. Her hair was darker but it was red like my daughter's but more red i have red-headed uncles and green-eyed relatives and a freckle all of us have these freckles i don't even know if my freckles went away i feel like some of my freckles oh my gosh no i have a face full of freaking freckles that means me or my boyfriend thinks when he sees me i was watching the gods must be crazy and I saw those African girl kids, boys and girls. They're big. My boyfriend says, "You got those big sad eyes." I was like, "No, I don't." <sighs> like I saw these kids with big dark eyes, and I was like, oh. "Like your heart just beats." Like that's so 
I do it. <laughs> Anyways, as you can see that on TV, when you turn on a TV program, there's not a lot of um, black children on TV, not the ch TV channels that we have. Anyways, I gotta go soon. I am. Um, I get a lot of hate. I sent a bunch of um, text messages to relatives, or sorry, friends, back on the West Coast. I did not get one reply. I said, hi, how's it going? How's, I hope your family's well. Please remember to vote, blah, 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 blah. I didn't hear back from one person. I'm offended. You could have just at least said, hey, long time, no here, you know. Some of you probably blocked me, who knows, maybe someone changed their phone. You know, people are getting political calls and ads and mail at the last, I'm getting mail at the last minute. Because, um, you know, some places do have in-person voting, but the Oregon stuff is like absentee, you turn it in, but you can still turn it in tonight by eight in the drop boxes. So anyways, I'm going to ask some personal questions and this is what my heart's told me. So I feel like I have my, my body is attached to my old way of thinking, which was programmed by other people in an abusive way, in a way that doesn't benefit me at all, but only benefits the other person. And it's also the brain that is told that I'm a, a scapegoat, that I'm the reason that people are struggling. So my problem right now is personal. And my mind, my body says, oh, just give in, just do what they want. My spirit person is saying, and my, and my mental, my new mental, emotional side is saying, oh, heck no, punk. You're not going to twist and manipulate me right now. I've already been there, done that with the same group of people. And now enough's enough. So I'm standing up for myself. Also, I'm standing up for myself. If that feels uncomfortable to my body. I'm getting mad. I'm getting aggravated. The one thing that keeps this simple is, hey, Mia. You don't have to tell anybody anything. You don't have to tell them what you're going to do on Monday in the office space you rent. You don't have to tell them your outside jobs. You don't even have to tell them your specialty. You rent the space. You got the key. You pay your rent. You go in on the days that you paid for. Period. You know? And somebody's going to come on top of me and change all that. Either I'm out of here. I stand my ground. Or... If you're not going to be texting me and sending me message at 7 a.m. on 11.30 at night, then I might compromise. But your compromising is taking away what I've already built up for myself. And I'm, lack of a better word, confused. I'm not going to allow myself to remain confused. Because the point is, even like that little girl eating with a fork, you know the truth. You are wise enough. You are advanced enough as that two-year-old to have a full-on conversation. Oh, the weather looks very nice today. I was thinking of, you know, after this, I would like to wash my pants or wash my hands and have you change my diaper or help me in the bathroom. And I, I'm going to go out and we're going to play on the playground, I hope, you know, before my parents get here. And, you know, my little sister is in the in the nursery. I do have a little, you know, thinking of a two-year-old having a conversation with that kind of a raspy voice like mine, like an adult or a, or a child, like a seven-year-old, like, there's no goo goo gag. Mm, mm, give me, give me. <laughs> like, the regular kids are age, you know, because they're that ter terrible. I call them wonderful twos. When my, I had two kids uh, 18 months apart, I call them wonderful twos, because I didn't, I wanted, even before I heard a law of attraction, I wanted to be, I was super optimistic. I am pessimistic now. Here's the thing, I was really optimistic, I was really passive. I was continuing to be abused by relatives, I was being hated by the community, and I was having people lie and cheat their way just by stomping over me. I became, not necessarily pessimistic, people say I'm super negative. So let's say that I had an event where I went to a juice store and the people were looking at me like I don't belong. And I had since bought juice. I spent we spent eighty dollars that day. We bought juice for me and another person. 
well, it was a gift to this guy um, who lives on the West Coast. Uh, actually, we found out he was, was he vegetarian or gluten-free or something? I don't know. He had some kind of dietary thing going on. But anyways, um... I had bought their stuff, and I saw it at the farmer's market, the drive through COVID market, right? COVID-related COVID. I don't like to say it like that. The drive through market due to COVID. Let's say it like that, COVID-19. SARS-CoV-2. Um, there's a young woman that was very nice. I don't think it was the same people. Smiling, all this stuff. You know, they sit there, playing on their phones, whatever, gets the stuff. I can't read the ingredients because the ice had... Like, and apparently, I found out they reused the bottles, and I guess they write on it with Sharpie, which is kind of gross. Are they right on it with something that wash doesn't stay on in water, um, or nice water? And I went back another time and I gave her a tip. So that's that's where I was with that. Uh, I haven't gone back. They moved the farmers market to, back to the market <laughs> place in town. And so the drive the drive through was lazy, but the drive through was convenient. But anyways, um, and it's weird because you're still like, what's the difference if you drive through or not drive through? which only keeps you six feet away from the person behind you because you, your car can't be in the same spot. Like, you're still, like, this close to the person that you're... And you still have to give them your money and your credit card and hand stuff. Like, they're still, like, right at your window. Like, the, you're, they're almost closer to you. And it, if they were sitting at a table and you were on the other end of the table, that's at least three feet. And if they're sitting here standing... I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm not trying to say anything. It was nice. I didn't go to last year. Because I was some new Mr. Deadline. I'll probably go this weekend, maybe. I said probably, maybe. Okay, I'm gonna go. We went to go buy some juice uh, for my birthday. They weren't open. That's another thing with either COVID or holiday, or sorry, it's holiday. Labor Day holiday, you know, summer's over. People change their hours. Oh, I get so mixed up on Google searches of open, not open. What's a sign of door say? What's a COVID thing? Oh, can you eat inside? Can you not? Do you have a bathroom I can use? I want to be a customer. Oh, I just spent $100, but you're telling me I can't. I can't use your bathroom. And I have to go somewhere else, which would mean that you're sending me to a coffee shop. That means I'd potentially have to buy something. It's like, hold it until I find a porta potty. I bought three pumpkins at the place that had the porta potty. Potty. They didn't offer me, they had other stuff for sale. They had moms and different pumpkins and food. Um, they didn't offer me that. I just pointed to the stand up by the road. I was like, oh, shoot. The stand up on the road only has a few items. Like, that was stupid. <laughs> like, me, like, I saw when I was driving away. The couple behind me had a bunch of moms in a cart and a, and a, and a radio flyer in a, um, I don't know if they were actually squash or gourds or, I don't think they were gourds. There's some kind of squash or pumpkin. I was like, wait a second, where the, that's where the tarps, I thought you maybe had to pay to go in because there was kids doing kids activities. Let me pray and meditate for a couple minutes because I got to get going actually. Um, actually, I don't have to get going for like an hour unless, oh, pre-election, eight o'clock pre eight o'clock on election day um getting my partner's caffeine the gum that he wanted um just trying to cut uh, not vape um <clears throat> well i don't think you can vape in the job but um water six gallons of water which i probably should have got two six packs i was trying to get him some rice milk they didn't have it uh, they had almond milk I didn't know if it was shelf stable, and I was trying to get him some rice, uh, five ninety nine for a pound or ten pounds. And that was actually, I think they had it available, or you had to order it through the mail. I don't know. Let me pause this. Hi, this is me. Um, I was just getting ready to cry. Actually, um, I can't stop looking out this window at the cheese. I lost most of our leaves. Um. I've been doing it for two months. I kept seeing the first leaves during a windy day. I tried telling my boyfriend to pay attention to me. But um, people were complaining that the leaves didn't have enough color to them this year. Just please, come on. Like, yeah, they got something better to do. And then complain about the color. Like, my partner in Belize, because of the amount of acorns, that there wasn't that many, that there was going to be a mild winter. So this is what went through my mind. I was talking to God, and I couldn't speak anymore. You know how chatty I am? I couldn't think of any words. And I was just amazed by the sun reflecting on the leaves. 
and how beautiful it is and the wind swaying the branches. And God is like, hold your ground. And the thought of my dad and the um, protests or the picket sign in Richard, Virginia, because blacks could eat at tables. Like, and I have the um, anti-racism group that sometimes has um, things where say we want white women to speak or we want black women to speak or we want blacks only because we want a safe space to be able to share our education, our, our information that we need to share our in, um, opinion and whatever and ask their questions. And I didn't want it to be, I didn't want to be separated like that, segregated from each other. Um, I'm not necessarily associate with things. I have white people complain, this seems like blacks only. It's like it's not when you show up. But the thing is, like some scholarships, you get you get neglected. And maybe not Asian, Hispanic. Some people have Hispanic names that they could look white. They could bleach their hair blonde and wear blue contacts and they're going to be judged by their name. But blacks, they're still, you're starting. If you're just born with white skin and you're left in a basket on the side of the road, you're already way up here. And as a black person born to an upper middle class family, I'm already down here. So I felt like God was telling me the systematic racism and how whites go to my friend said he went to Rhodesia when it was in Zimbabwe, like how people looked at him, how white women complained that I couldn't find any hair care products in Haiti. And whites complain in the small tribes, Native American or Hawaiian groups that were judging them, their white skin. Cause like I even have um, European, Eastern Europeans terrified of Christians cause Christian came and annihilated people. You know what I mean? Like it's not even just color on non-color, non-color on color. It's also um, crusaders and stuff. Um, the God is telling me, stand your ground, hold your ground. This systemic racism is worse than you thought. And I said, oh, what about that group I was in the other day? Well, are those people going to say, well, white people do this to us? Oh, the white woman was treated like they said something about how white women were putting up with certain things. And it's interesting because I thought the same thing. I have been researching Hillary staying with Bill after that Monica Lewinsky. I have been researching um, and they had talked about something about Sarah Palin. And I was interested in how they were going to depth about these women being pushed up as, oh, we have a little bit of diversity here. And then not keep holding them up. And that the they were tolerating this type of behavior or treatment. I want to say behavior and treatment at the same time. And what I was praying that went through my mind about the systemic problem of you. Let's say there's a native tribe that was hurt by long haired people. So they have decades of generations of people that are scared that it's not that they're hating them, that it's not fear and ignorance. It's fear and wisdom that, Certain type of people came in, annihilated, raped the women, this and this and this. Okay. And they're holding their ground. They're standing their ground. And they're going to be suspicious. Of you. They might not hurt you. They might not let you in. They might feed and clothe and house you. You know? And, and those people, the white, white um, people, can go out of that village of 300 people out in the middle of Nevada or wherever in the desert. And they can go back into society. They can go to India. They can go to Africa. They can go to Europe. And they can be treated like kings and queens, no matter if they're crooks, thieves, rapists. So that's the thing, a systemic and global issue. When people are in a place where everyone has the same, like India, everyone, everyone, not everyone, but so many people have dark hair, dark eyes, and different levels of skin color, like Africa, different levels. You know, Africa is a continent, I know, and India is a country, I know, and Nepal. But skin bleaching creams on Haiti, Islanders, everywhere. Skin bleaching creams. Did I have them as a child? Yeah, heck yeah. Mom had bought me some skin bleaching cream. Heck yeah. And I thought it was just on the outside. In the U.S., it says for blemishes to help reduce blemishes, stretch marks, skin um, abnormalities on spots or whatever. But you know, when, as I went through medical school, I saw the burns. People were getting, go to any lengths because their dark, dark daughters could not get married because the men didn't want 
the dark. And you'll watch foreign movies. And you'll see. I was watching. I was in a Swedish meetup group. Um, language group. And they talked about. The jokes. The translation doesn't come through. From Swedish to English. And some of the cultural things. And I, I recognize that. Um, I'm watching Italian. Things in Spanish. Usually that. And that sometimes the European, it depends what movie you're watching, right? African type movies. Like, I can see so much. I can see so much of the translation not coming through. Even not knowing the language, you can see the body language. You can see the, whether it's a laugh or whether they're putting someone down. We are humans. We are like animals. Bickering. Not getting along and not minding our business because the comforts of society. You see the people uh, I would notice um, missionaries putting pictures of a place in Africa, like kids kicking around with some trash with a big smile, bleach white teeth because they're eating homemade food without sugary, sweet, sticky stuff, and running around barefoot, playing flies on the babies, and the women all colorfully dressed walking around in that Middle East. Like, clean clothes, sitting on the dirt, like, I want to know their laundry secrets, I mean, isn't it simple to get a pan of water and just hand wash it and hang it, I mean, for Pete's sakes, I'm so primitive in my thinking, I used to think that all people in Zimbabwe, in Africa, were in grass huts and eating off the ground, you know, like, we had teachers from Zimbabwe, five of them come in with suits and ties on, and actual shoes, I don't know if anyone wears sandals in the summer, but, just up. Folded, clean, pleated pants, talking about living in the city. So I'm like, wait. And they did talk about the country and the drivers and the, and some of the primitive um, housing and the probably you talk you can talk about AIDS and, and even talk about social issues and and people are like out, out here kind of dirt. My teacher talked about going to a house visit. One of my teachers in grade school and that they had the family had dirt floors. Anyways, those people can go out of that system that small, small community where they're not being accepted and go out into the world and be bound upon. That's the point there. And as a black person, you go all over the world and it's, you're still little. And I had seen some ball players on TV not speaking clear English at all. Now, I'm not judging anything that's Ebonics. I don't like that term. But I, there's a culture with dress, with hairstyle, with behavior, and with speech that is passed down through their community. So it's not the Ebonics. It wasn't like that. It was the ability for him to form sentences and talk at all was very strained. And I said, one thing for sure, he is a pro ball star and he's good at that to be in, on the TV trying to speak. And I don't know if he had been on drugs or anything. That could also be another thing. But it was interesting. Um, and, you know. Sometimes people date people that are cute women, and they're dumb as a doorknob, and they want that person riding around in their Corvette or in their convertible with them. Like, they don't care. They might be cheating and lying and stealing, and for a while, it's like, look at me. She's reflected on me, and I was able to get a girl like that. You know, like, so it's not, it's not necessarily bad. It's just that something that I observed. So I'm looking out the window, and I feel like God's like, hold your ground. There was a black um, um, professional healthcare pra practitioner that doesn't have anywhere near the licensing I have, and sometimes I think I can get along with a healthcare practitioner. Like, and I I talk to nurses, and they are super snobby about everything about medicine, and I was like, well, I run my own clinic. Like, I could literally hire you. I could have a in Oregon. I could have a nurse practitioner or a physician's assistant working under me. I can hire medical um, assistants. I can do IV therapy. I can get certain credentials and do cancer treatment. Like, you know, there's from childbirthing to anything, especially in Oregon. I could do it. I could do it. I don't know. There's certain people that were doing ketamine. They, I don't think they were. I think they were nurse practitioners. Anyway, so it's a different story. 
they're doing, like, prescribing it or applying it in office or whatever. Anyways, someone's telling me to hold my ground. God's telling me to hold my ground and to be true to yourself and don't put up with these people. You had too much going on. You have too much to do in your life that you don't have time to st stop everything and... I stop everything and my body reacts and I get tachycardia and I need to let that bounce off of me and stick back on them and that I, I just think that was rude someone told me if someone's treating you a certain way then you don't have to put up with it you don't it's your fault if you stay in a situation that's not ideal for you and so that, thinking about that cleaning house I don't have to put up with this mess. I just had this prepping video up. So you guys think that anybody's going to... Um, do any riots? Protests? Vigils? I can see... Alright, you see how fast that was? Let's see if that's accurate. Nope. This is about an actor. It's 60. I'm just skimming it though, so. Oops. I think I just clicked on something. This is what I'm talking about. Step four, step six. Um. No, it's not as easy as I thought. This guy's saying, sometimes you just see the results. Oh, these are all Bible verses. So I had to come back. Um, so something on this page, which I seen, uh, trust God, clean house, and help others. And then these people keep talking about Bible scriptures. Let's see what I can do. Sign step four real fast. Well, it's in here. It's, there's something about clean house. And so I'm going to do what I can to make a list of stuff that's aggravating me and literally clean my house. Um, I'm scared to go to the recycling. I'm gonna, I might need these boxes to make a fire so I can um, freaking heat my tea water. So this is how it works. It might actually be on step four. I don't know. I'll come back to that. I know it's in there somewhere. And it's I'm taking it out of context anyway, so that would be good for me to sit and find that. Um, there's some stuff in here like about sex. It's like I couldn't talk to my sponsor about that um, just because there was no nothing to talk about that it was like 10 years of the past so this is a long video I'm just going to um I'm going to say that I am aggravated with a lot of people in the world um that person that is black that has that pr provider's uh, license they criticized me and told me to give up my business and that it's not God's will to that I need to go do something else because it's not God's will. Now, here's what my higher power tells me. You don't give up on this dream and you do something else. And I had to remember that these people are not my higher power. These people don't know my whole story. These people 
don't are not consistent. They're flaky. They're woo -woo. and they're trying to give me suggestions, trying to tell me stuff that they like that sounds kind of pervish to me. Like I wouldn't want my kids hanging around with these people. I'm like, just absolutely have an emergency. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you're just like you might rather choose a stranger <laughs> to help them. But if you can't find a stranger, then that's like the last resort before you know. You just tell your kids, you know, be prepared. But there's people, this person, I noticed that there was a lot of white women, a lot of black women that were telling me, break up with my boyfriend, close down your business. What's the point of you doing this stuff? You need to be in your place. You need to be, if they find out you're doing a minimum wage, stupid entry level job, uh, um, the sales and marketing like I was doing, um, actually, it was more than minimum wage, so I, actually the joke was on them, but um, considering the job was actually fun at first, and um, it was fun until it wasn't, <laughs> like, cleaning up hotel rooms and being the only one wearing gloves and masks <laughs> inside of a room where no one else is, even the customers aren't wearing masks, so you're touching their towels and their bathroom yucks and, you know, that crap, that COVID crap, falling in the sewers and you got some urine all over the and poop all on the in and outside of the toilet, clean up sheets, and, and the other things that make me say I'm never staying in a hotel, because I want everything washed, I want the comforter washed, I want the blanket washed, I want, I don't want no pillow freaking shams, you give me a pillowcase, heck, I don't even want to use your pillow unless you sterilize it, like, just iron everything in the room, which actually it might be, I don't really put irons in all the rooms, I like when they put irons in there. In fact, speaking of iron, that's going to be my goal. I'm going to get off here. I'm going to jump in the shower. I'm just going to take a rinse down. I'm not going to wash my hair. I put some hair moisture in my hair yesterday. I think this is the black oil group. I'm not positive. Um, this is the Oyen Handmade Conditioning Care Hair Do you Moisturizing Leave-In Conditioner with Castor Oil and Olive Sequoia or Squalene. Sorry, I said something weird. Nourish moisture. Or anyways, this has a picture of. I don't know if that's the family who makes it up from Baltimore. Um, I'm gonna actually contact them. I wanna. I'm gonna do some net, like extreme networking, and I'm not gonna do it in this city that I'm in. Just like Portland, uh, uh, my office. I am gonna do networking. I don't know if I wanna do the edges of the state like just get a map out and pick like the four corners around the state and send a uh, email i already have a draft of an email um or letter i wanted to talk to the amish i want to talk to native american tribes i want to talk to geriatrics facilities and i want to talk to mental um mental health we will have this holistic and mental health sometimes they're getting paid and they're being able to talk and sit there and tick tock count the money that they're getting in their pockets sometimes that helps just being able to talk to someone and have a regular person that you can open up to um and a lot of times these people don't have good suggestions or they're something about them is really irritating but because of finances or insurance you don't switch and that's another thing clean house so i'm going to think about that too um i think a lot of mental health professionals are like doing a lot of work yeah this is, this is where i'm coming with up as a naturopath studying in portland oregon for five years plus two years of midwifery you do i didn't train to be primary care everyone trains to to do primary care but a lot of people don't mental health schizophrenia bipolar autism adhd depression abuse um that's kind of a different type of mental health, but the support can be there. And um, what's the other big one? Alcoholism and addictions. Those are my specialties. Cardiovascular disease and cardiopulmonary medicine is another specialty. Homeopathy is another specialty. I'm not going to do open heart surgery. I could manage cardiac meds that a lot of these people having surgeries and stuff. I'm going to let their clinic, hospital, primary care, all their person prescribe if you're coming to me and you don't have the medicine for your mind or your body 
in Oregon, Washington. I, I feel very comfortable doing the treatment plan. Um, if you're not compliant, I'm not comfortable because I don't want that to follow me because you didn't listen to what I said. I do get a lot of non-compliance. Are people like not willing to do what I say and they, what they're doing is life-threatening to them. I don't want that on my watch, you know? Um, I would like to say there's a grant thing open till the 6th. Today's the 3rd. I got to bust my balls. <laughs> like I don't have to do it. I'm, I'm going to hold my ground. I'm going to pray and meditate. I'm going to, um, there's a lot of tension with the election. Um, there's, I've, I'm finding out. So with this anti-racism group and having the groups with the small groups with black women, I don't know where we, most of us have been to college. I don't know if, who, how people that I talk to, if they go to predominantly black schools, grade schools, elementary, or sorry, grade schools, colleges, but a lot of us intermingle in community. Some people, like some of my relatives, do not intermingle outside of their, their black community. It's not even black community. It's like their church and their family, and that's it. They won't talk to neighbors. They don't like the people in town. They're not going to social functions and stuff. Um, so me and my kids, there's a lot of Jewish people. There's a lot of Muslim people from different countries, uh, Middle East and African countries. There's a lot of uh, people of color, there's a lot of Asian Americans, Russian Americans, different types of Hispanic Latinos and um, Hawaiians. There's a lot of people in Portland that I had associated with um, whites, a lot of whites. That that was the majority of the people that I have in my phone. Actually, I have a lot of numbers in my phone. There was a lot of white people at first because of my recovery. And then when I got out into my neighborhoods, into my housing programs, into the world, then I got a lot of different things. There's so few parents that have um, adopted, they're white and they adopted kids from Asia. I know um, several so people I hung out with, so there's couples I knew that were white, but one was Christian, one was Jewish. So I've celebrated holidays with those people before. Um, they were reading the Torah, the candles, and I was, sorry, I don't pr pronounce it because I'm really tired still. So. And I had them have Christmas trees, to have like a Christmas Hanukkah party. It's like I, when I lived, moved to Southwest, which I lived for 10 years, there was a lot of Jewish people there. They would tell you about their holidays and their funerals and their fast and they're breaking the fast. And they would go into detail about different types of Jews around the country. There's kids in my kids' school that, like, my daughter was fasting when it was a Jewish holiday because the, there were so many. They went to their other school, which was predominantly, or like, at least half Russians, Russian-Americans. So we had the graduation ceremony was translated to Russian, English, English to Russian. There was and all the music people were Russian kids. Uh, it was very interesting, actually. <laughs> it was very interesting. I was like, how did we end up here? Like, this is, we always end up not around Americans, we always end up in a non-WASP community or a school, like, sometimes you end up in a very, like, in certain things you're involved in programs, it's like non-WASP, like the opposite of that, but then in the rest of the surroundings, especially in Portland, or even here, it's like WASP, um, like Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, and non-gender, like gender, cis, heterosexual right and that and they could say i'm heterosexual and i got a wife of 30 years and i got three girlfriends on the side they could say that they hate gays and i think it's nasty i'm like you're nasty bringing home disease lying to your wife you know hurting your kids as your kids found out and don't want to say anything you know that, that's to each his own you know but it's like don't call a kettle black oh yeah don't call a kettle black because even if you believe in your Bible, there's harems. Like, even if you believe certain things, um, let them believe in their culture and their religious beliefs. So I'm going to take a quick shower. I'm going to get on the scale and weigh myself. I'm going to get um, play my game for a few minutes, and then it's going to be time to start the day. Um, so this is... This is a cryptic message. I should, at the end of my messages, or the end of my videos, I say some more real... By the way, I watched Michael Moore live. He couldn't sleep because of this election day. He couldn't sleep. It was 3 a.m., 3, 4 a.m., and I couldn't sleep either. Um, 
when the full moon just passed, um, my plan right now is to check in with prayer meditation with my higher power and with myself. My plan right now is to do what I've been doing for the past, my whole life, and that's hustle harder. Just keep busting my butt, studying, getting my credentials, keeping my credentials, putting money in the bank so I can take care of my family. And I had an attitude for the past three months about I'm tired of taking care of everyone. Give and take. There's times that you need to be taken care of, there's times you take care of people. And you find association with your loved ones, which is three people in my life, that will give and take. And realize that those people will give and take. And don't take, don't think, and if you don't like it, if you don't like take giving, don't do it. Like, I have to tell myself. And some associations are not family. It's like business and phone and I have to call and see then get my phone bill lowered and all this stuff. But all the other stuff, enjoy your life. You got your office offices, you got your homes, you got the storage unit, we got multiple cars, we're fixing up cars and doing all this stuff, I'm sewing and doing creative stuff, God told me over the weekend to rest, did I rest? No, I went to work, I was supposed to rush Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I went to work, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, we could barely move, <laughs> like, raining, cold, I was so aggravated, because my body was just like, I don't need nothing, honey, I hope I had a bottle of water next to me, because I was probably too tired to be getting up and getting stuff, but we're prepping. And this one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use like you can use the foundation um, of my program, which is spiritual and um, programs like NA and NA and on, on. But I can use and Buddhism. I can use my my foundation and my program and these principles. Step twelve or use these principles in all of our affairs. So I can use my principles of prepping as a prepper in all of my affairs. So my plan is to be self-sufficient and self-reliant and to survive. The biggest thing as a survivalist is to survive. And sometimes that means I might prep until age 99, just store up seed bank and store up, let's say, I'm not storing up gold, but let's say I had bonuses at work or worked at your job just to stack up some gold bars, you know. Do that stuff. Be wise. Write a will. Will it to the kids. Put stuff in a safe deposit box. Bury it. Put it in a safe. Whatever, you know. Get a security camera. Get the, the security measures up. And you could say, oh, I'm a prepper. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen today. Some people are prepping for civil unrest, and then they got a hurricane, um, full spectrum of survival. Oh, really? Well, they weren't expecting the hurricane. Well, there's a lot of hurricanes this year. They were expecting their electricity to be out for five days. He's like, yes, I'm wearing the same clothes I wore yesterday. He's <laughs> like, yes, I'm wearing the same clothes. <laughs> like, I don't even have my electricity off, but I'm still wearing the same clothes I wore yesterday. No, I didn't wear this yesterday, but I might wear it tomorrow. I'll stay out. So just be true to myself. Check in with my higher power. From a business standpoint, my business is going to do exactly what it's been doing, but it's going to improve. My business standpoint, uh, because of COVID and because of my um, relationship status, is going to be to reach certain goals that I have set out for me. And while I'm working towards those goals, to be more than just surviving or failing, but to thrive in life and shine under the, the eyes of my higher power is not to show off to the world, but to, to shine my light and those people that call my number and want to hire me will be blessed, not from me, but God working through me, through my hands and through my mind. I'm a miracle when it comes to my life and my addiction problems and the abuse and the harm, self harm I was doing to myself as a child because I couldn't handle abuse put on by me by my by my parents. Um, someone last night said that some officials were saying that COVID was a three or four year problem. You know, um, we don't know. Spanish flu, one thing. 
It was more than a year. I think it was two years. Anyways, I have to be true to myself and to my higher power. This hair is, like, longer than it's ever been, so it's, like, kind of wearing me out. I'm going to take a shower. It's going to curl back up, shrink from the moisture. Um, I'm going to steam iron some of my clothing. Um, I ordered a washer. We don't have a generator anymore. We don't have anything. I had a big suitcase um, charger that I got left at our relative's house. I um, like a big solar suitcase charger. That was awesome. I could charge a computer out in the forest. That was awesome. I, we had some little ones. I don't know how well they work because I'm getting a 12 volt adapter inverter. Um, 12 or yeah, 12 volt car to household adapter. That should be here tomorrow. And I'm getting a miniature washing machine. The last time I went to a laundromat, there was bugs, there was hair, there was all kind of. There's usually like some dirt, a few machines. It was crowded. There's people in there without masks. It was. We had some someone we knew, like, oh, our clothes usually come out dirtier than when I put them in. Dog hair and all kinds of crap. And there's, like, you see other people's pubic hair, like, besides the, the dirt, it's, like, <laughs> disease, and I don't want, like, I was itchy and this worry last night. So, I'm a, my my goal for my my business is I got to take care of the short-term goals, this, this grant writing and um, paying my bills and enjoying my life. My long-term goals for my business are just to keep doing what I'm doing, but do it better and do it more organized. And every time I add something new, so let's say I call up today and I order um, um, syringes and um, fluid and uh, B12 so I can do B12. I would want a crash car so I need an upper and upper and an oxygen tank. But let's say I spend a thousand dollars to do IV therapy, and I end up making a flyer for myself saying, I'm offering this service, please contact me, blah, 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 blah. Or I can just do regular injections, like not just, you know, the bags would be more than B12. The, um, anyways, I'm just trying to keep it, keep it real and get out of here so I don't miss my appointment. But yeah, so my plans will change, you know, my, um, my goals will change. My plans will change. Um, if I have a lease, every year for my housing that this month's the month or for office that's year to year, then I always look for other options. I always do. My package is ready. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go in the shower and I'm gonna go get it and bring it back by